Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my recommendations video for where you should start reading Star Trek. So you want to start reading Star Trek, but you don't know where you want to start. And you feel that the literary universe is just too vast to, to navigate. You realize there are over 800 Star Trek novels in print to date, and that's not even including all the kid books that are out there. So you're feeling a little bit nervous, and you feel it's a bit too overwhelming. Well, never fear, because I am here, and I have some recommendations. These are not ironclad recommendations. These are not the end-all, be-all. You must start in this place and use these exact books. But I think these might help you in jumping into the Star Trek universe. And I think that these would be good starting points overall. I have some recommendations for DS9 series. I have uh, recommendations for Voyager, for Next Generation, for a crossover series if you want to read all of them together. And I also have recommendations for some of the newer shows like Picard and Strange New Worlds. So why don't we begin with the um, uh, first Star Trek series that I want to talk about, uh, DS9. Deep Space Nine was the first Star Trek series to end that had no foreseeable future in film or television. While Voyager was still in the middle of its run uh, on TV and the next generation movies were in the midst of coming out, DS9 was already done with its television and they were not moving on to movies. So the, t uh, the book writers had the opportunity to take it where they wanted to go. So I have uh, duology to mention as a good starting point, and then I have a standalone to mention. From the duology standpoint, I'll mention Avatar, books one and two by S.D. Perry. This basically, if in my opinion, is basically one normal size novel. It's actually pretty, pretty short um, when you look at uh, the, the, how, many, how many pages there are and how many words per page there are. It's pretty much like a normal novel, um, just split into two parts. And uh, each of these feels like an episode almost. And these tell the story of what happened immediately after Deep Space Nine. If you've seen most of Deep Space Nine and specifically have seen the ending you're ready to jump into these books. You don't have to have read any other books to get these. And they tell an interesting story. They tell a story of what is uh, the, sh the base like now that Kira is in charge. It shows what are um, uh, some of the other characters up to, uh, where's everyone gone, and it throws in a little bit of the next-gen characters really briefly. So this is, I think, a great place. It is the place we talk about um, in, the, in the Star Trek literary community. We talk about this as this started the 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 lit verse the the post nemesis line so this is what i would recommend for if you want to get into the uh star trek books for uh deep space nine after the continuity or, or when the continuity started or you just want to read a standalone you just want to read a fun deep space nine story that's just just a fun story to read well there are several options and avenues, but I would personally recommend Revenant by Alex White. This is a more recent release. This was came out in December 2021, but this book tells a great Jadzia story, um, and some other characters show up as well, but it's primarily a Jadzia story focusing on all the different iterations of Dax. And if you like reading about uh, how uh, all the Daxes have different personalities and how all the Daxes all come together, this is a great book for you. There you go to the Dax homeworld, you see see a lot of other Dax type characters, other um, uh, trills, I should say, a lot of the trills there. So I certainly recommend this, um, uh, uh, this book if you just want a quick standalone. It's a very quick read, but it's a very fun read, and I think it's well worth it. But you're not a uh, Deep Space Nine person. You want to read about Voyager because, uh, Jane, you, like, like myself, Janeway is your captain. Um, <laughs> That's pretty controversial when I say that out loud. Janeway is my captain. I love Janeway. She's, she's fantastic. And I love the Voyager crew. And they're, they're, they have a special place in my heart. Of course, Deep Space Nine and the original movies, uh, and uh, sorry, I should say Next Generation and the original movies uh, have a place in my heart. But no one has a place in my heart. What is that flying around? Um, like the Voyager novels and the Voyager characters. And so... Much like the Avatar series uh, said what happens immediately after the show finale, the Homecoming duology shows immediately what happened after uh, this Voyager finale. Voyagers finally come home after their seven-year journey, and now they are 
really stressed out because they have all this uh, futuristic technology on this sh- their ship. They've also potentially invited a Borg invasion that almost happened. Also, what do you do with a crew that's been gone for several years? Do you promote all of them? Do you promote some of them? Do you not? What, is this, the, what does the crew's relationships look like with the other people in their lives? This duology is an excellent way by, Kirst, uh, by Christy Golden, one of the best writers in media tie-in fiction and one of the longest-serving media tie-in fiction writers. This duology does an excellent job of keeping the story going and moving us into the post-Voyager uh, TV show and really sets up how you can, can do a continuity. And, of course, if you like Jean-Luc Picard, some uh, Next Generation characters show up briefly here as well. But you want something bigger than that. You want a big epic showdown with Voyager. And the best place you can get that is with Full Circle. Full Circle is in and of itself kind of a standalone novel, while at the same time really sets up the uh, post-Nemesis line for Voyager. I don't want to give away everything about this book, but I'll at least say this much about it. Voyager is given a new task midway through this book, the full circle task. And most people on Voyager are not happy about what they have to do. And this happens at the same time as a major Borg invasion. So the beginning of the book is really like a fun little Voyager romp. And then midway through, the Borg invasion occurs. And then you go post-Borg invasion. And so this book covers a lot of the timeline. It really shows where Voyager was, where Voyager is, and where Voyager's going. And it just... Uh, It really endears you to some of the characters and pays off relationships that the TV show could not. There are some things that they just could not do in the TV show that they can do in the books, and they do it flawlessly here. And this is Kirsten Beyer, who wrote all the books after this for Voyager, all the existing books. They haven't written any recently since she finished up the line. But she wrote all the books for Voyager, and she became a TV writer. Uh, She's written several television episodes. And so this one is, I think, well worth the time and well worth the place. Um, uh, you could start with Homecoming, the duology, or you could jump right in. This book explains everything you need to know that you missed, but um, if you read this, you'll feel a little bit more rewarded, but both places are excellent jumping in points. But you're not a Deep Space Nine fan, and you're not a Voyager fan necessarily. You are a Next Generation fan, and you need some Next Generation novels. I unfortunately have not read too many standalone Next Generation novels. Most of the novels for Next Generation featuring those characters have been either crossover novels or the Next Gen characters have showed up in other novels, kind of like they did, kind of like Picard does in the Avatar duology and the Homecoming duology. But I do have some Next Generation recommendations. One of them I would have is Greater Than the Sum, which tells a small Borg story. And then you also have the book Before Dishonor, which tells a big Borg story. And I feel like Before Dishonor is what First Contact should have been. This is the big Borg epic battle that we were promised. And both of these lead up to a crossover event, which I'll talk about in a moment. But both of these kind of explain where the crew is now and kind of set up where the crew is going in the continuity. And I think do an excellent job of setting up the post-literary universe. There are a lot more books for next generation you could read. There's a lot more books that are good starting points. This is just what I would recommend. But if you have your own suggestion, let me know in the, your thoughts in the comments down below. But you're not a uh, next generation fan or a Voyager fan or a DS9 fan. You're a fan of all three and you want all of them included. Well, It's kind of hard to get Voyager involved because of some things that were happening behind the scenes. But if you want a big crossover event book that is kind of kicks off the literary universe, I would suggest the Destiny trilogy featuring Gods of Night, Mere Mortals, and Lost Souls, all three by David Mack. Um, uh, This is the trilogy that was promised as the big Borg trilogy but in reality is something entirely different. The Borg play a big part of this trilogy, and it is primarily about the Borg, but there's something else going on. And this book 
ties in some of the Enterprise continuity from the Enterprise TV show into the 24th century storylines with Next Generation and DS9. And you get to see uh, Esri Dax as she takes over the Aventine. You get to see um, uh, the Next Generation crews. You get to see the Titan crew with um, uh, Riker. And so you get to see all of these different crews have different tasks that they're working on throughout the galaxy. And they all get intermingled uh, with this new species that they're dealing with and with the Borg. And this new species and the Borg have an interesting relationship. And so this trilogy is really a good jumping in point. It is a little bit like you're going to spend the first hundred pages of the trilogy trying to place where everything is and who all the characters are and where they all in there on their lives. But once you start, it's you're, you're going to feel like you have to read them all boom, 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 because they're just amazing. And they were all released one right after the other, right after the other. So they were rent, meant to be read really quickly. And this sets up all the post-Nemesis stuff. It's like David Mack blew up the timeline. was like, all right, let's make this big. Let's see what we can do. And so this is really well worth it if you really want to delve into the, the post-Nemesis timeline. And it actually ties into all the other books that I've talked about and kind of builds off of them. But let's say you don't necessarily want that big post-Nemesis series. You just want to jump into some books that tie into the new Star Trek shows. You're kind of interested in what that Picard series is like. You're kind of interested in Strange New Worlds. What kind of books should you read for those? Well, just to start, I would recommend Star Trek Picard The Last Best Hope by Una McCormick. Really ties into understanding Star Trek Picard season one, which I didn't love that season, but this book made me appreciate it a little bit more. And this book introduces a lot of the characters in it and also does a great job of showing the hopelessness of the situation with the Romulans and also shows the character that Jean-Luc Picard has. Uh, I think that this book is one of the best Star Trek standalones out there and I think is really accessible to general audiences. You don't have to have read much. In fact, you don't need to because this book kind of set a new continuity for the um, post-Nemesis line. It's it's, it's, a, it's its own thing. It doesn't have anything to do with these other things. And I think this book is totally well worth reading. There's also a new book, a recently released book within the last month that I would recommend, which is Star Trek Strange New Worlds by John Jackson Miller, which is the first book in the Strange New Worlds line. Um, it's a kind of a standalone event book that really tells this big story of, uh, of the Strange New Worlds characters. And if you really liked that TV show, this book is the book for you. Um, I could give spoilers, but I don't want to. So... Those are my recommendations of excellent starting places for several Star Trek series and subseries. Um, obviously, there's a way more that I could do, and you should let me know what your opinions are down below. But this is just some of my recommendations for the new Star Trek fan, because that is, when it comes to Star Trek, that's one of the most frequent comments is, where do I start reading the lit verse? So... Uh, and when it comes to the, the original series, there's so many books, that's like an entirely different video. And I'm nowhere near as experienced on the TOS books. But that is my recommendations on where to start reading Star Trek. If you have a recommendation, let me know that in the comments. And please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.